Can a leader be so nice that the employees take advantage? I'm Greg Schenkel, president of Unique Training and Development and Frontline Leadership Systems, and today we gotta to deal with the fact that sometimes, even though we're trying to be nice, people will take advantage of that easygoing nature that we have as frontline leaders. Hey, gutter ball, what's up? Hey, Josh, what's up? Not much, you know, I'm still recovering from that party of Friday night, you outdid yourself. Oh yeah, that was a blast. Good times, good times. Oh, hey, listen, I heard it through the grapevine that there's a supply run being done next week. I was hoping since we're buddies and all, I'd be able to get on it. It sure would be nice to get out of the shop. Now, being too nice is a risk that all leaders need to be aware of, and we've talked about it in different episodes where we've dealt with friendship versus leadership and favoritism. But what about when you're just trying to be easygoing and then your team like takes longer breaks or does other things like uh, doing less work than others or maybe asking for more time off or more, um, more than is reasonable to ask or certainly more than most of the other folks on your team are asking for. And you say yes a few times and then before you know it now you've got this precedent and it starts to create this dynamic in your team. So how do you avoid employees taking advantage and what do you do when it happens to you as a leader. Well, I've got a few tips. Uh, tip number one is be aware that it's happening. So think about some of your relationships with your team members. Do you have some people that are getting away with taking longer or more personal breaks? People that get more time off? And again, we may make allowances depending what might be happening to them personally, but over time, this can create a, quite a difference in expectations between team members. So just think about the people on your team. Do you expect more from some and less from others? And is that really fair and consistent? Or is it starting to cause a rift and causing you problems potentially as a leader in terms of your ability to get the work done and get your team to be motivated and engaged. Tip number two is to set consistent expectations across your team. So if you don't have any standards as a leader, it's going to be easy for people to create a very wide gap between expectations for some team members than others. So deciding for you what your standards are as a leader is important. And if I could Make this suggestion for your peers and you, because sometimes you might have a certain set of standards, but another supervisor or manager in another department has a much wider set of expectations that they will allow. Uh, that can cause problems too. So having some degree of consistency, and if you're the manager of other leaders, you should make sure that they are leading in a fairly consistent way so that employees won't say, well, in that department they get away with this, but here we can't. So set consistent expectations and then explain why. So this is still part of tip number two. Explain why it is that you need to set these expectations in a narrower band for the fact that you don't want to have perceived favoritism. You want to make sure that the workload is distributed evenly and that you're being fair and consistent with everyone. Tip number three is to remain friendly and approachable. Sometimes I think leaders see that they're getting taken advantage and so they overreact almost to the negative side. They start becoming more distant, more robotic, more methodical, and they forget that their employees are human beings. They are not machines. And so therefore they do need some TLC. And so we want you to still remain friendly and approachable because that's the best way of having information flow freely to you and also makes them more receptive when you ask them to do something. They'll be more likely to help you because they realize that you're treating them as a human being. So when you figured out how to make sure that employees aren't taking advantage of the situation, you might say, well, you know what? I need to work on some of my other leadership skills and abilities. And of course, that's our expertise here at Frontline Leadership. So it all begins with a conversation and you can visit us online at uniquedevelopment.com. We'll have a discussion with you to see whether virtual training is the right answer or whether you need an instructor to come and deliver workshops on site. Whether you've got a few people that need to take training or you've got hundreds of people to take training, we're doing that now in French, English, and Spanish. So again, visit us on our website or you can connect with us on our social media channels. Whichever way it helps for you to investigate how to increase the leadership ability for yourself or for other leaders in your organization, we are here to help you maximize maximize your leadership effectiveness.